If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. Well, this is my Star Wars Trilogy Arcade Deluxe Edition. Uh, for a while now, I've been thinking about making the big pivot. That's the pivot that uh, a lot of home arcade collectors get into, where they start with home arcades, multi-arcades, modern arcade one-ups, and that just whets their appetite for the real thing. And then they start going for the big ones. And I don't think I'm gonna get bigger than this. Uh, this cabinet was uh, listed for sale in my home state of Maryland. Uh, about a hundred miles from me and I just said why not now so I uh, rented a truck and headed down and got it uh, turns out that this actual arcade machine I've played before this one came out of uh, the uh, boardwalk arcade in Ocean City Maryland that I used to go to all the time as a kid so I've actually played this actual arcade machine many, many times, and now here it is in my home arcade, and I couldn't be happier. Okay, so getting this thing wasn't easy. Like I said, I rented a truck and drove about 100 miles down to Maryland's Eastern Shore to pick it up, and here was my first look at it. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll do. Damn, that's crazy. Damn. So this thing broke down into the seat, the TV section, and the topper, but I still uh, couldn't get this myself, so I hired some local movers, uh, they didn't know what they were in for, but they were good sports, and uh, they just uh, really helped me out here. And here I am not believing that I actually own this. So I got it home and into the basement, and that's when the real work began to address the various issues that uh, this thing had gotten over the years. First and foremost is it was dirty. So I took the cover off and found years worth of quarters that were for some reason shoved into the control panel. Uh, I found uh, old light bulbs that were broken, so there was some broken bulb glass in here. So uh, I just went through here and had to give it all a good cleaning and, of course, get those bulbs changed out. Then uh, the uh, action buttons were cracked, so but that was actually an easy fix because in my existing parts bin from modding arcade one-ups, I had the exact same buttons, so that was an easy swap out to uh, fix. While in there, I changed the bulbs out for LEDs, and while changing LEDs, I also changed the ones behind the coin slots. So another big issue was the amount of play that was in the flight stick just from over the years on use. I wanted to get under there, but all of the screws for the cover plate were stripped out except for two. So I actually had to go through and drill all of these out except for the two that were still good. Uh, but then I was able to get in there and take a look at the... Uh, let's stop just a minute. Look at these monster recoil motors. Oh my god. The, this is for the force feedback, and you can see like just how much they kick and... Oh. Jesus, now I know how big the motors are. I can see why it's able to like react like this. Anyway, back to the uh, floppy stick. So you can see that the Y axis is pretty good, but the X axis, there's just so much play in the stick between those two sandwich plates before it turns the potentiometer. I wanted to address that. So I was able to get one of the sandwich plates off and then I just kind of put it in vice and smacked it with a hammer and kind of put a little bend in it right here. And that makes it so there's a lot less space in there for the X axis for the stick to move before it starts turning the potentiometer. So I'll call that a win. While in there, I went ahead and deoxed the uh, potentiometers and they seem pretty good. Okay, by far though, the biggest problem was the screen. A long time ago, the rear projection screen in this was replaced with a modern flat screen. And I just thought this TV was worn out uh, because it was all yellow and dingy, but it turns out the TV was fine. It's the PCB. Uh, the Sega Model 3 PCB video was not outputting the color blue. It was just putting out red and green and uh, there was nothing I could do to fix that. So I went ahead and got the whole stack out of there and sent it off to Ken at iRepairSega.com. So he is the nationwide renowned guru for fixing all things Sega Arcade. And he did find that my video chip was uh, bad and he got that replaced. He told me it was probably bad because of a bad ground. So he had me test earth ground to logic ground. So I just went ahead and checked for tone against these any of these white wires on the top of the PCB uh, board against ground. And if you get a tone, then you got a problem. And we actually traced it back to this ground wire to the X-axis uh, recoil motor. So we cut the green wire, which is the ground for this power harness, and that fixed the issue. It's a redundant ground, so it didn't do any harm. And this should keep my new video chip from blowing out the same way the old one did. I then went forward with putting a brand new screen in here. I was able to source a slightly larger uh, TV screen with a much better picture quality. 
And then I was able to enhance that by using a GBS upscaler to take the VGA 480i and upscale that to a 768p video signal before then putting that VGA into a display port converter out to the TV. And here are the results. You can see here the original screen on the left and the new screen with all of the upscalers on the right. And uh, it is a night and day difference. Uh, anyone who's working with a Model 3 and is going to a flat screen mod, I definitely recommend using the GBS converter because it just makes a huge difference and they cost almost nothing. Okay, and the last big issue here is a volume problem. Um, I actually lose volume control sometimes and the sound doesn't cut out. It actually becomes incredibly loud. So I lose volume control and it instantly will just go to max volume, seemingly at random. So the first thing I did was try changing the pots for the volume control, but that didn't do anything. So I figured a workaround is I would pick up a set of these inline attenuators and actually wire them in to each speaker so that no matter what, I had some way to adjust the volume, even when I lost main volume control. And you don't even notice them. I just kind of kind of put them under these speakers here and it's just kind of a fail safe. But I still wanted to address the root issue and I was actually lucky enough to find somebody on eBay selling a working amplifier for Star Wars Trilogy and thinking that might be the problem, I went ahead and got it and swapped out the uh, amplifier and that seems to have fixed the problem for good. With all this done, I think I can finally sit down and enjoy my Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have found this informative and maybe even a little entertaining. Uh, as I do any further repairs or modifications to this cabinet, I'll be doing updates. And I also have a few more arcade surprise videos coming up, so stay tuned to the channel and I'll catch you all in the next video.